Yes, right. Yes. So hi, everyone. Welcome to the third session of the workshop. Uh, we are happy to have today Karsten Reikold uh, to present a paper on smooth transition co-integrating regressions, modified nonlinear least squares estimation and inference. Uh, your, the floor is yours, Karsten. So you have 20 minutes, including questions. Yeah, thank you very much. And thanks to the organizers for including my paper in this uh, nice program. Yeah, as uh, it was introduced, the paper is about smooth transition co-integrating regressions. And to not lose time, I will directly jump into a motivation. And uh, for, for this motivation, let's consider a linear co-integrating regression model where we have two variables, yt and xt, and they are in a co-integrating relationship and the co-integrating vector um, is uh, beta and xt has this random walk um, um, behavior and the first difference of xt can be correlated with the regression errors ut so we allow for endogeneity and the uts can be serial correlated so um, considering this model over a specific time period um, might uh, not be so valid because for some part of the period, we might have um, um, a co-integrating vector, which is equal to beta one. And for the second part of this uh, um, time period under consideration, the co-integrating vector might be equal to beta two. So, um, this is a regime switching um, type behavior in this model. And we can also think about this transition between the regimes uh, might be smooth. So it's not an abrupt change, but a smooth transition from, let's say, beta 1 to beta 2. And of course, this transition can be decreasing or increasing. And we can go even one step further and think about this transition to depend not on the time, so like a structural time change or something uh, for the co-integrating vector, but the transition might depend on the regressor xt itself or even on any other integrated process of order one, which is not co-integrated with our original regressor xt. And in these types of settings, um, Oliver Stipka and Martin Wagner, oh, I forgot to mention that he's also the co-author of uh, this paper. Um, they propose tests for the null hypothesis of uh, linear co-integration against smooth transition co-integration, where the transition variable is allowed to be either time, the original regressor, or one of the original regressors, or any other integrated regressor not co-integrated with the original regressors. So the first step for these uh, smooth transition co-integrating analyses is um, testing for smooth transition co-integration. And when we have found evidence for these smooth transition co-integrating regressions, um, we want to estimate um, yeah, the, the, the model. So the linear component and the transition component. And one way to do it is proposed in um, Cycon and Choi 2004, who um, extends the dynamic OLS approach of Cycon to which was proposed for linear co-integrating regressions. And they extended it to smooth transition co-integrating regressions. However, they only allow um, the state to depend on the original regressor itself, so on xt. And in our paper, we have basically uh, two, two contributions. The first contribution is that we complete their analysis in the sense that we show that their dynamic correction for the NLS estimator is also valid 
in case uh, the, the transition variable is time or even an integrated process that is not co-integrating, co-integrated with the original regressor. And our second contribution is that we propose another modification of the NLS estimator um, in the sense that we extend the fully modified approach of Phillips and Hansen to these smooth transition co-integrating regressions. Of course, the fully modified approach of Phillips and Hansen has also um, been extended to nonlinear co-integrating regressions um, in, by other authors. Um, however, a large part of this literature has um, some stricter conditions on the on the correlation structure in the data, and um, we do not we do not need such conditions um, because we use a different framework for the asymptotic analysis. But well, I will come to this uh, later. Okay. Um, after testing for such a smooth transition co-integrating relationship and finding evidence for this type of relationship, we are in a smooth transition co-integrating regression model. And um, here in this paper, we consider models of this form where um, yt um, depends on uh, xt tilde. So these are like our xt from before, but now it's a, a vector of uh, regressors. And it also depends on deterministic components like an intercept or a time trend. And this linear model is um, extended by this um, by, by these regressors in blue, which for brevity, um, we allow all original regressors in dt and xt tilde to interact with our transition function. So this function g uh, ensures that we see such a transition from one state of the co-integrating vector to, to, the, to, a, to another state. And um, this transition function is assumed to be known. So it's chosen by the practitioner. And um, what is not known is the exact um, um, the exact slope of the transition and the exact location of the transition. So both these uh, these information are stored in this parameter theta g, and this has to be estimated. And um, to simplify notation, we we for for these three cases uh, for the transition variable, we define x t as x t tilde if our transition variable um, is an element of the original stochastic regressors, or if it's uh, simply the deterministic time trend. And um, we define our xt as a vector of our original, original regressors and the transition variable if st is a stochastic regressor not co-integrating with xt tilde. And for the first differences of this XT process, together with the uh, regression errors, we assume a functional central limit theorem to hold. What we also assume is that this uh, smooth transition function is bounded and three times continuously differentiable, and that um, these parameters describing the transition are take values in a compact space. Um, these these type of assumptions are um, rather common in this uh, nonlinear regression literature. And we also stick to them in our paper. Um, we can simplify the notation further and store everything uh, we need uh, from the regression part of the model in our function f, um, which has three components, uh, the regressors, deterministics, of the deterministic regressors and stochastic regressors stored together in set key, the transition variable st, and all the parameters. So our regression parameters and this theta g from the um, 
transition function. And important for the development of asymptotic theory is that we need partial derivatives of f with respect to either x or theta. Um, but because the transition function g is known, we can also compute these uh, partial derivatives. Um, depending on the transition function, you can, of course, choose um, more simpler transition functions or more complicated transition functions. And this will also um, mirror or reflect itself in the uh, derivatives you have to calculate. Um, so to derive asymptotic theory, we use a concept um, proposed um, in this setting in Saikon and Choi, and which is called triangular array asymptotics. Um, this is a bit different to standard asymptotics because here we assume that we consider a sequence of models increasing with um, sample size t. And these, the sequence of models is, um, is you can think about um, that it's constructed such that all variables um, appearing in this model are res rescaled in such a way that they uh, converge um, to, to the corresponding limits. So for example, our vector of integrated processes is transformed in such a way that it converges to a Brownian motion. Um, and we fix this um, sequence of models uh, at a specific sample size T0. So this T0 also appears in this limit. That's why we um, denote these Brownian motions with a B0 as a subscript. Um, but what is important here, these transformations are only required in the theoretical part of this paper to derive asymptotic theory. So it's not required in applications when you want to use our methods. Um, so the starting point for nonlinearly squares estimation is, um, is uh, for modified nonlinearly squares estimation is a nonlinearly squares estimator. And we, um, we see here two, two problems with this estimate or one big problem with this estimator, which is that its limiting distribution is contaminated by second order bias terms. And to get rid of the bias terms, we um, propose fully modified OLS, uh, fully modified NLS estimations. Um, so the NLS estimator is um, is constructed in or is um, from the NLS estimator. We um, subtract the sample analog of this limiting uh, bias terms, so that in in the limit, the limiting distribution of this NN estimator follows a Gaussian mixture distribution, which allows for standard chi-square inference um, when, when we want to consider wild-type tests, for example. So our triangular array asymptotics tells us that chi-squared critical values are suitable for constructing or for, for performing tests when considering wild type test statistics. That's all what triangular array asymptotic does here. So in the end, you use the fully modified NLS estimator and the wild type test statistic based upon it. And you can um, test hypothesis on all these um, parameters in the model. Um, however- We have five minutes. Yeah, thank Sorry, you. you have five minutes. Yeah. Um, however, you, you cannot test all restrictions, but only those which do not violate identification assumptions. So for example, you cannot test whether this linear part, this nonlinear part in your regressions is zero, because in this case, um, this theta g, the parameters in the transition function would not be identified. So, but that's why it's important to 
use first the results or the test in Stipka and Wagner to test for smooth transition co-integration. And then when you are when you can be sure to be in a smooth transition co-integration regression framework, you can use our procedures. Um, as I said before, we also extend the results of Cycon and Choi. And to these settings with all these three transition variables. And um, what the important message here is um, that the limiting distributions of the DNLS estimator and the FML NLS estimator coincide. And we also see in finite samples that both um, estimators perform relatively well and similar. And um, what we also find is that, um, and that's the, the last thing I want to highlight here, um, is that it's important when, when using our methods that there are enough observations um, in the part, in the sample space of the transition variable where the transition actually takes place. So um, these methods here will perform uh, very well when you have uh, quite a few observa uh, some observations um, in the part where the uh, transition takes place. Um, but these methods will not uh, perform very well when you only have observations at the one state where beta is equal to beta one and at the other state where beta is equal to beta two. So you need something in the middle to, uh, so, and the reason for this is that this uh, transition, this, this theta G is also identified in finite samples more or less, because when you don't have observations in the, where the transition takes place, um, there's no hope to, to estimate uh, the slope or the location of the transition. Um, I have to skip the, the, um, the application and come to the conclusion. Um, so we discuss fully modified and dynamically fully, fully modified NLS estimation. We allow for three types of transition variables. Um, the transition can be driven by time, by the original regressors, or by an integrated regressor not included in the model. And we use triangular array asymptotics to to um, to derive um, asymptotic theory and to validate that you can use um, chi-square critical values to perform inference when considering wild-type hypothesis tests. Um, we can also um, test some restrictions on the slope and on the location of the transition, um, which might be a, a very interesting uh, tool for practical applications when you can really test uh, whether the location is as you might expect or as economic theory could suggest. Um, yeah, and in the illustration, um, this is preliminary, so it's not um, so, so sad that I don't have uh, the time to discuss it here, but we find first evidence that these methods also perform quite well when uh, using actual data. Okay, thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you. We have time for a quick question if somebody has one. Okay. <clears throat> 